That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Beekeeper. It's the eighth film directed by David Ayer, which MGM Studios and Amazon is releasing for all of us to enjoy on January 12th, 2024. The director? David Ayer. Do we know this person's work? Several, many oh. of his films, but uh, I, I'm actually a fan of kind of his earlier stuff. I liked End of Watch. I liked Sabotage with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Olivia Williams. Uh, Fury with Brad Pitt, that war movie. Uh, and then it's then then things took a hard left when he did Suicide Squad in 2016, which is terrible. And that trend continued with Bright with Will Smith and Joel Edgerton as the cops. And one of them is an orc. Mm -hmm. uh, and then. Uh, the Tax Collector. Oh, with Shia uh, LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. That yeah. was really bad. Uh, but prior to directing, he wrote some pretty notable movies, most notably uh, Training Day oh. for Antoine Fuqua. Uh, also Dark Blue with Kurt Russell, is, I think is pretty good. U571. Uh, he seems to really gravitate towards these uh, working class, blue collar cop dramas. But uh, so, yeah. In The Beekeeper, one man's brutal campaign for vengeance takes on national stakes after he is revealed to be a former operative of a powerful and clandestine organization known as Beekeepers. What's your pull quote? Despite some enjoyable and considerably violent action scenes, The Beekeeper is shockingly stupid and it is consistently unclear if the script intended self-sabotage. It's not the bee's knees. It's not even a B movie. Mine. So bad it's good, I don't know. But I'm sure there are people out there who will love this film. I'm really torn because I found myself being entertained through much of this film. A lot of it does feel deliberate. It is very stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I don't know. I, like, I was entertained, but I would never watch this movie again. I think we need to drag this the screenwriter a little bit, Kurt Vimmer, who also back in the day, like his his early, he directed a movie called Equilibrium. That is a that is a Fahrenheit 451 ripoff, to be sure, but quite enjoyable with Tay Diggs and Christian Bale. Uh, but then went on to do Ultraviolet with Mila Jovovich and a Children of the Corn remake. Uh, but he's written some turkeys as well. Like he did a Sphere adaptation and Total Recall. Um, he did Street Kings. He wrote that script for Air earlier. And did do a film I did like with Omari Hardwick and Loretta Devine called Spell. But for the most part, more misses than hits. And this is definitely a miss. The plot, Jason Statham plays this uh, former operative for this organization called Beekeepers, which I guess is like a super secret division of the CIA or something. But he's now retired. And is a, literally a beekeeper. So he's a beekeeper on this farm owned by Felicia Rashad. Mm -hmm. And he has an affinity towards her because he says more than once that she's the only person who's ever done anything for him. So we see that one day Felicia Rashad is at her laptop and she gets this like fraud alert saying, call this number. She calls the number and we find out that there's this like call center that's basically f defrauding people, mm -hmm. like vulnerable people to give them personal information so they can milk their bank accounts. And Felicia Rashad allows these people to take all of her money. And she also uh, happens to have access to a... Tr uh, She's like the director of some nonprofit organization. Yes. So she for also... For children. For children. So... In addition to her pension and for she for someone who's not very tech savvy, as we can see, and she says she has immediate access to all these accounts. This two million dollar account, in a, and then plus her this two million dollar nonprofit account, and all the money's drained. We we literally see like all of these. The software that the fraud company is using is very convenient because it's on this big screen, and we see her uh, accounts whittle down to zero. And then she's getting all these fraud alerts, which we can talk about. But immediately, immediately after she loses all of her money, she puts on her Sunday's best and shoots herself in the head. <laughs> and kills herself. It's not funny, but it's like... Uh, well, I mean, wow. I think that's part of the issue is like, this is so stupid and I do and like that. But I think the premise of this woman... I don't know why Felicia Rashad thought this was a role for her. But luckily... Her daughter is an FBI agent. Luckily, Agent Verona Parker, played by Emmy Raver Lampman. 
I hated this character. That's a bad... It's... I don't know which one I hated more. This character or the one Ruth Nega played in Good Grief? Oh, she was so annoying. So Felicia Rashad's daughter is this FBI agent who we're told is sort of estranged from her mom, but happens to be there on the day she we, kills we herself. We get all these contradictory <laughs> yes. details. And she decides that she's going to figure out who it is, but initially she confronts Jason Statham because here's this random man in her mom's house. Mm -hmm. And he takes it with stride because he knows he didn't do anything. With a jar of honey. And he's also too cool for school, so he just takes everything in stride. And she's ultimately convinced that he had nothing to do with it and that her mother was defrauded and that's why she killed herself. So Jason Statham decides to go on a rampage to take out who, who's responsible. And we find out the person at the top of this food chain is the President of the United States, Madam President. Played by Gemma Redgrave, part of the Redgrave family, Vanessa, Un Vanessa's niece. Unbeknownst to her, her family business, which in part is being run by her son, played by Josh Hutcherson, mm -hmm. he is the one running these like data mining companies that are actually defrauding the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And she somehow has no idea. In fact, she has hired Jeremy Irons, who's the ex-CIA director, mm -hmm. to basically babysit her son. Wallace. And he also seems to be ignorant about what Hutcherson is up to. Right. So, Jason Statham kills everybody and gets all the way to the president's house. Well, and, not the house. They're in Boston. Well, no, not the White House, but it is the president's, oh, one sure. of their residencies. He gets there, and as the audience, we don't know who he's trying to kill, like if he's trying to kill the president or her son, but the final scene is the president is with her son, and the son is about to kill, Josh Hutcherson is about to kill his mom, mm -hmm. and then Jason Statham kills him. And then Verona lets Jason Statham get away. The FBI agent mm -hmm. daughter. And in sandwich, everywhere in here are a lot of Honey bee references. Let's start with that. There are so many bee analogies and metaphors. You and didn't see the opening credits. There are newspaper clippings saying hornets attack bees. <laughs> someone needs to... There could be a YouTube video of just someone documenting every time someone makes a bee reference. Then Jeremy Irons' character has this little monologue explaining the beekeepers. Mm -hmm. Who he seems to know so much about. But then was surprised. Well, that's not true. When he found out that Jason Statham was a beekeeper... He says, if a beekeeper says you're going to die, you're going to die. And he, <laughs> Wallace, Jeremy Irons initially washes his hands of helping Hutcherson until uh, President Danforth calls him and, and it makes it seem like they used to kind of have a fling. And she's like, my son's worried. I need you to pull, pull some strings. So that causes Jeremy Irons to call his replacement, Janet, at the CIA, played by Minnie Driver, <laughs> to ask what she can do, and she's like, oh, it's beekeeper business. I'll call the current beekeeper, and it'll be taken care of. But then it's not. But the current beekeeper looks like some punk grunge character you'd see in a really bad early 80s film who shows up... At a gas station. With a minigun. And shoots up the gas station. Uh-huh. Like, she's in the station, like, so all y'all want to explode. And, of course, Jason Statham kills her and gets away. She's designed like the the... Uh, thugs in the opening of Terminator, Bill Paxton. Let me get through <laughs> That's these. That's what she's dressed like. Let me get through these notes. So when Jason Statham uh, realizes what happened to Felicia Rashad, and after he gets out of police custody, he calls a connect he has with the beekeepers. And the lady goes, why are you calling here? I need a favor. What is it? I need to figure out who some people are. And she's like, okay, well, who is it? And Jason Statham goes, well... He has a phone number. The FBI had a hard time finding it. And this lady goes, we're not the FBI, are we? And then immediately we cut to her calling him back with the information. She's like, whoo, this took me a minute. It took Literally. like two seconds. Then we see Jason Statham go to this call center. With gasoline cans. And it's in the trailer. It's, it's all so over the top. It's all so over the top. But he shows up, burns that place down. And then the main person running that. Mm -hmm. uh, Mickey, played by David Witz. Mickey, he he just stands there while this man burns down everything, and then he calls his boss, and we find out that Josh Hutcherson is in charge of these centers. And we're told that each of these call centers, there are 20 of them, each pull in about $9 million a month. 
So they're making billions of dollars a year defrauding people. So after Jason Statham blows up that building, Mickey, this really, he, Josh Hutcherson tells him, well, you need to go take care of it because Wallace says he's not going to help. So Mickey gets some thugs to drive down. They figure out like possible options for who might be disgruntled. And we see the first place they go to is Felicia Rashad's house. And they see Jason Statham get into the car and Mickey recognizes him. So they shoot up Jason's bees mm -hmm. and then they go to like his barn where he sleeps. And I actually thought that was a pretty cool action sequence. I mean, watching Jason Statham mow down a bunch of assholes, yeah, that's entertaining. But, but I didn't believe that that Mickey kid who was so scared and didn't do anything, he really rode up to that place with a gun and jumped in the barn like he was going to do something. He wouldn't. He has a nice end as well because he straps him to the back of that old pickup and drives him off a bridge. <laughs> yeah, he had a nice After ending. After cutting off uh, all the fingers on one hand. So when... Jason Statham takes down the first center. He goes to another center. And the FBI are already there waiting. And I think the way the... Because what's Jason Statham's character name? Adam Clay? Adam Clay, but that's not his name. No, but I think the way Adam Clay's written is funny. And it's perfect for Jason Statham because he's very flat. And he just pops up in places. Mm -hmm. And all of those moments, I laughed, the audience laughed. Mm -hmm. Where he's just like standing in the middle of the FBI. And he's like, hey guys... Yeah, I'm about to go in here and tear shit up. And the FBI tried to stop him and he whoops everybody's ass. And I thought it was funny because the person leading that FBI group. The SWAT team. Or the SWAT team, I'm sorry. Uh, gets a call saying like, well, what happened? And he says, we're not dead, but we got our asses kicked. But when Jason Statham goes into that center, we see another version of Mickey, this new guy. And he sees, we see that... Um, Jeremy Irons has hired an elite team that he also demeans and says that the beekeeper could kill all you, but he hires them to go protect this um, call center. So, so the SWAT team's not in there and they are so rudely treated by the, the, the ring, leader, the, the, the manager, the MC of this game show that's going on in here. And as they're all retreating, the whole staff gets up they're like, yeah, leave. Some lady goes, get out of here. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. And then I don't understand why the beekeepers become actual beekeepers. Because even the the current beekeeper that he kills at the gas station, she has a manual about beekeeping in her vehicle that the FBI agents get. So then Verona can read us a bunch of facts about bees and how about sometimes there's a queen slayer when the queen is producing male offspring that are defective. <laughs> but getting back to the second place, because we don't really know what Jason Statham's plan is or who he thinks he's taking down until we get to that second call center and the manager of that call center, Jason Statham is beating him up with a stapler, which I thought was funny. But he sees on that man's desk that he has a portrait with Josh Hutcherson, who I swear was sitting next to Rebel Wilson. But Jason Statham sees Josh Hutcherson and that's when he realizes that it's the president's son. So the, the script doesn't make it clear how Jason Statham knows that he needs to go find the president. But that's the clue to the audience, I guess. And then we get to the Queen Slayer um, moment. So that's when I guess we are supposed to assume. And that's when the FBI daughter thinks that Jason Statham is going to kill the president. Mm -hmm. Every scene with her, with her boss... Oh, God. Oh. Well, it's like... Because it's two lowly FBI agents. The only two FBI agents that are dealing with this, and they have... We're told... This man who we're told is the second in command at the FBI keeps meeting with them, and he's like, oh, blank check. Do what you need to do. What? The FBI has been made aware that there's someone actively trying to assassinate the president. And it's these two. And you have these two lowly FBI agents in charge of it. And then there's a... Bobby Naderi is playing Wiley, her who has this flirtation with Agent Parker and has a baby at home. And he keeps... That, that keeps being referenced. I don't know why. So Josh Hutcherson now has... Wallace, Jeremy Irons' character, tells him, you know, the best thing you can do right now is go be with your mom. Because a beekeeper... The, the best chance you have of being safe is being with your mom. 
because your mom's the president. So she's going to have the most secure place wherever she goes. And if it's clear that they don't have the best relationship. So he calls her and says, hey, can I come hang out? I thought that was ridiculous. That's ridiculous. She hands her phone to her assistants like, Kelly, please help me keep him sober this weekend. Yeah, just make sure he doesn't do any drugs and he can come over. And then he's like, well, can I bring some of my friends? And she goes, yeah. And then, so Josh Hutcherson and his raggedy friends come over, one of whom is this guy named Lazarus, who I think is supposed to be Scottish. I thought he's... I I think he's South African, but um, I don't know what that is. Taylor James is that character, and that yellow corduroy had me Oh gay. my God, he was so over the top, and he's spitting when he talks, and you can see the spit fly. And he's got this hair on his face. He looks like some kind of little creature. I did think the best action sequence was when Jason Statham fights Lazarus, though. It's pretty good, yeah. Because I thought of that saying, uh, you're about as useful as a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest, because we find out Lazarus has a prosthetic leg. From the last beekeeper he fought. <laughs> and Jason Statham rips off his leg and then whoops his ass. I thought that was funny. The dialogue is so bad. Josh Hutcherson tells his mama, again, Gemma Redgrave, power looks good on you. I did like him in this movie. This is the third terrible film in a row I've seen with him. Uh, I So a few things I didn't understand. So the FBI daughter of Felicia Rashad, mm -hmm. she, she knows what happened to her mother. That her mother was taken advantage of. They're never going to get the mother back or her money. And now you have this person who's trying to take down the entity that destroyed your mother's life. Why is she trying so hard to stop him? I don't know. She's about... see, I, She's kind of like the Ethan Hawke character to me in Training Day, where it's like, you're doing some really dumb things that aren't related to self-preservation. The reason I would give this... I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm going to say this movie's a thumbs down for me because of that character. I don't understand why she... I feel like I needed to better understand why she's trying to stop him. She should have been cut out entirely so we could give Felicia Rashad a little more screenplay. Screen we don't time. even need the daughter. We don't need the daughter. At all. But we, we could have used a few more, you know, scenes of connection between these people and why he cares so much for this woman that he would do all this. I did think a really cool scene was how Jason Statham gets into the president's house because he has to, like, travel under some trucks and... Mm -hmm. The action sequences are very well the, done. The escape board. Yeah. And he gets up into the undercarriage of this one truck. And uh, somebody, somebody is riding underneath and sees him. He's able to kill him and shove him discreetly up. shove the body up into the... <laughs> I thought that looked cool. Okay, Josh... like So the mom, the Madam President, doesn't realize what her multi-billion dollar business is doing doesn't understand what her loser son is doing even though she knows he's responsible for this business so she seems genuinely surprised and when she finds out what he's doing because he has to admit it to her she's like i'm gonna tell the truth she's like well the only thing we can do is tell the truth and if the american people think i should be out then i should be out but there's, but but i'm gonna tell the truth and there's also a subplot about how she was elected with uh funds that were obtained through her son Right, so it's like dirty money. But yeah. Okay, so she knows her son ain't shit. Then the son kills the second-in-command to, to the FBI. He's all coked up. And then he's about to kill his own mother. Mm -hmm. Like, she's, she's in a headlock with her son about to kill her, and that's when Jason Statham kills him. And when the authorities come, like the Secret Service come to take her away, she is howling as if she wanted to jump into the casket with him. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand why she felt that way. I don't know. <laughs> and it's, I think the film thinks it's being timely by making this president a mixture of both Trump and Biden, who both have these raggedy ass kids doing stupid things that everybody knows about. I, and then we didn't say the full ending. So Jason Statham, Statham is about to get away when the FBI daughter sees him and she's like pointing a gun at him. And then she just lets them go. And then he escapes in the water in the end. But, yeah, I th this feels timely, but not smart enough to be, like, it's just, I mean, the only word I can describe or use to describe this movie is stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid. I, I think Queen Slayer would have been a much better title, by the way. Yeah. Uh, I am putting Jason Statham on my worst hair list. His beard is suspiciously dark, and in some angles looks like they painted hair on his face? I don't know. It looks terrible. What would you give the beekeeper? 
one and a half. I think it's really shoddy and rough around the edges anytime it's not doing one of the action scenes. Like, but the film can't just be that. I'm giving it two and a half out of five. I thought it was fine for like a single viewing and I'm sure people are going to love this movie. So, and I, and I can see why. Uh, anything else? No. Join us on Patreon and listen to our podcast. Bye. Oh, <laughs>